your number two. We're, we're at the penultimate point here. I think our number ones are going to be the same. Right. I'm certain that this isn't on your list. Okay. What decade are we from? And I'll try and guess. What do you think? I think it's the 90s. Obviously, it's the 90s. Mm. I live in the 90s, Kelly. Okay. I don't think it's 90... I could see you going from 91 because that's like your era, your prime era, but let's hold that one back. I know 92 is your number one. It's not 93 because even though it's bad, because like (laughs) even you have limits. I mean, I enjoy it. It's very difficult to find those limits. I like Damien Demento and Doink. um, Oh, it could be 94. It's definitely not 95 because who enjoys self-pain? You've picked 96. 97 maybe not 98 or 99 so it's between 91 94 97 <sighs> mm, I'm going to eliminate 97 because you like the the earlier 90s more I do I'm going to go with 94 because you love Brit it's not 94 it is in fact the one you dismissed first actually is 1990 oh really yeah I'll justify it right Sure. Plead your case. It's almost the opposite of the 2017 Rumble. So it's front-loaded. Like, it's so front-loaded. So there's about 10 entrants in a row where you're just like, that's a, a megastar, you know? Wait, was that the one that opened with Axe versus Smash? It was 89. Yeah, it was 89. That was 89. 89's boring. Uh, but 90, you've got, like, Dusty. You've got Piper. You've got Savage, DBRC. Um, you've got... Brett, when well, he's not quite Brett, Brett, but you know he's still there. You've got Jake, you've got Andre. Like it's all of the superstars, genuine, bona fide legends of, of wrestling, and not only and the crowd's insane for it. The concept's still fresh, so people are still really into it. You don't, if you haven't seen it before, you obviously don't know who's going to win because it's it's not for the title match at WrestleMania or anything. It's just it's just the match, mm-hmm. and then. You've got the tremendous, like, all-time great exchange between Hogan and Warrior, which as a fan in that era, that meant everything, you know, because that didn't happen, right? You, you never saw the two top baby faces go against each other. And for you to see this guy who can't be beat, which is Hogan, and this guy who can't be beat, which is Warrior, you know, <laughs> it's like, hang on a minute, these guys are now fighting each other. Like, this is a dream match. It's like... It's like the the old school equivalent of people who nowadays would want to say, you know, Sting Taker. What would happen? You know, all those guys in their that their peak, or people who'd want to see, I don't know, Kenny Omega and Drew or something. Whatever it is, you know, these mm-hmm. dream matches that that can't happen. That was one of them, and then it and it did happen, and that was the start of it. And it was just tremendous. And I th- is that the one where you've got the Warlords elimination as well, which I think is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So. It's just superstars all the way, characters who are over, you know, just a proper rumble. It's just really, really fun. Again, it was one I'll need to go back and rewatch. I've not watched for ages. Uh, so my number two, like, I feel like this one going to get lost because of how things ended up. But if you remember when Triple H returned at Madison Square Garden in 2002. Yes. It was amazing. Yeah. It was phenomenally built up. U2's beautiful day plays. It's in Madison Square Garden. He comes out. He it's it's just the best. Then they build that rumble up like there are multiple people who could win. There's Triple H, there's Steve Austin, there's Kurt Angle, there's The Undertaker, there's Kane, there's the Big Show. They do a thing in the go home SmackDown where they all do finishers on each other to sort of say, I'm gonna win the Rumble. So you go off there with SmackDown with like a bay of bodies just kind of laying there. And then you have this rumble match where you have so many different eras of wrestlers because you have the returning people from the Attitude Era like Godfather, Goldust and Val Venus. You've got Mr. Perfect from the early 90s. You've got all the big stars of the current day, Austin, Undertaker, Kane, Triple H, Angle. You've got the people who are bubbling up like the Hardy Boys. You've got um, Rob Van Dam who's just come in. You've got that amazing elimination of the Undertaker by Maven who's just one yeah, tough enough. that was good. The and Hurricane spot. The Hurricane spot, like there's to me that rumble and it's got that amazing set where there's like yeah. green lasers and the logo's good the logo's great the yellow orange logo yeah. and um, and like even though you know Triple H was the guy that was going to win it still felt like they took you enough a ride to get there that it, it, it felt epic and even though Triple H's match with Jericho at Wrestlemania is a big disappointment you know they've said that it's not like we're breaking any new ground here but like no. that rumble win that rumble itself it was perfect and I think it was 
it's one of the ones if I'm you know on Rumble Day, I'm gonna stick that one on every time. Okay. I'm really glad you picked that because that was my sixth place. <laughs> so <laughs> you know that was that was my toss up. I was like, uh, is it? So I'm I'm glad you picked. So I think it's great as well for you know all the reasons you said. And that was that was kind of like oh it, it's good again. You know, after the invasion, it was like, oh, it is still good. Oh, there's loads of stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was, was everybody at that point near, near enough. And, you know, it kind of went downhill pretty quickly th- that year. But, yeah, I, I, I like that one. I think it's a really, really, really good Rumble match. So, I mean, our number one is, I'm assuming, going to be the same one. 